From the start of our marriage, Barbara always seemed to dislike me. When I gave birth to my daughter, her attitude towards me became even worse. This is what I expect from young ones nowadays. Can't even take care of your child properly. With those words, she mocked me, only adding to my stress. I wasn't the only one who fell victim to Barbara's spite. Here's Lily's story. My name is Lily, a 28-year-old stay-at-home mom. I live with my husband Ryan and our daughter Sakura. Our daughter, who just started elementary school this year, is full of energy and always up to some mischief. When she returns from school, she prefers playing with her friends over doing homework or she runs around me as I do house chores. As I look after her, I manage the household, check her school handouts, of course, participate in school events which have increased in number. Before getting married, I used to work full time. I was also part of a sports club in college, so I always thought I was fit. However, being a stay-at-home mom is more exhausting than I imagined. It's not that I underestimated the job, but it's surprising how much there is to do. Yet, my husband is very supportive and our daughter is the sweetest. That's why, despite the challenges, I try my best as a wife and mother. However, there's only one thing I simply can't deal with. That's Barbara. Barbara is old-fashioned and struggles to accept new ideas. Right after my daughter was born, she would say, Why are you feeding her store-bought formula? You should be giving her breast milk. You never know what's in those commercial products. She would often snatch the feeding bottle from my hand as I tried to feed my daughter. I tried explaining that I have difficulty producing breast milk, but Barbara wouldn't listen. Furthermore, as my daughter grew older, Barbara continued her interference. You can't give her prepackaged food. It's obviously bad for her. A good mother would make food from scratch. Juggling first-time motherhood with household chores, dealing with Barbara's frequent visits added to my challenges. While my husband helped with chores and childcare, he had his job, so I couldn't rely on him entirely. Feeling overwhelmed, I resorted to giving my daughter ready-made baby food. These days, there's a wide variety of nutrient-rich options available. However, to Barbara, this seemed like a mere excuse. Every time I tried to explain, You know, when I was raising Ryan, we never relied on such things. She would reminisce about her own experiences, suggesting uh, that younger moms like me weren't doing enough. At first, I tried to brush off her stern commands, believing she had our best interests at heart. However, her criticism began to shift. I feel sorry for Sakura, having a mother like you. I bet Ryan regrets marrying someone like you. You're failing as a wife and a mother. Her negative remarks about me grew more frequent. And now, she seems to lead with a jab. By this time, my daughter has started elementary school. With visible results like test scores and school evaluations becoming frequent, Barbara's commands increased. She visited more often, always leaving a sour note behind. Because of her, my exhaustion grew, creating a cycle where Barbara's mood worsened seeing me drain. Frankly, if she truly cared about us, I wish she would step back. You need to install some culture in my granddaughter. Piano lessons and French classes. And maybe a tutoring program. My neighbor's granddaughter does all of that, you know? When she handed over a stack of pamphlets with these suggestions, I felt utterly overwhelmed. Barbara probably didn't realize she was being intrusive, I get that. But my daughter and I have our own pace. I wish she would stop using her granddaughter to show off. I felt too intimidated to confront her directly, so I asked my husband to talk to her. However, that backfired with Barbara snapping, it's nasty to talk behind someone's back. If I had spoken directly, she would have been upset anyway. It's like there's no pleasing her. My husband seemed frustrated too. I've talked to her several times, but every time she ends up blaming you, Lily. I'm really sorry. He looked utterly defeated. Maybe Barbara was just worried about us in her own way, but her actions were causing more harm than good. Given Barbara's age, changing her mindset now seemed unlikely. My daughter already seemed annoyed by Barbara's meddling, and I hope as she got older, any direct commands would make her reflect. For now, pushing the issue seemed pointless. If she wouldn't listen to us, all we could do was try to forget. 
I decided to ignore Barbara's commands as much as possible and gently rebuke her when she became too intrusive. Then one day, while doing housework and watching my daughter study, my phone rang. The person on the other end was a classmate from school and we were in the same club. Even after growing up, we stayed close. After having kids, our meetings reduced, but we kept in touch regularly. The call was about my upcoming birthday. Apparently, they're planning a trip to celebrate it. They're gathering our old club friends and suggesting a trip to a hot spring. I never expected an invite like this at my age, and lately, I have been exhausted not just because of my daughter but also due to Barbara. I was genuinely happy about the invitation, but being a mother of a young child, it's not that simple to leave home. Traveling with friends sounds fun, and I would love to go, but if I do, it would be a lot to ask of my husband. Maybe it would have been different if my daughter were a little older, but I'll have to pass this time. But then, a trip, why don't you go? Surprisingly, when I casually mentioned it to my husband, he immediately agreed. Really? Are you sure? You'll need to be back before Sakura returns from school, right? My daughter is still in first grade, so she finishes school early. Considering when my husband gets off work, he would need to come home early. Of course, leaving our daughter home alone is out of the question. It's not like the trip will be several days, right? I can make it work. You've been tired lately, Lily. Just enjoy your birthday and don't worry about us. I wondered if he was thinking of relying on Barbara. But he said, If it comes to that, I'll take a day off. I'm a bit hesitant to leave Sakura alone. He seemed to feel the same way I did. Feeling reassured by his words, I decided to go along with the plan. But I didn't want him to struggle for several days, so I opted for a day trip. He told me not to worry about it, but it was my concern. Even if I went on a multi-day trip, I wouldn't be able to relax thinking about home. Plus, our daughter is all set to celebrate my birthday. She thinks I don't know, but I have seen her secretly drawing my portrait in her room. I didn't want to disappoint her as a mother, so I feel good about choosing a day trip. While discussing my birthday plans with my husband, he asked, Oh, uh, by the way, did mom contact you? Caught off guard by the sudden topic change, I told him no. Puzzled, I asked him why. Well, I spoke to her without telling Lily. She's been wearing you out, hasn't she? So I confronted her a bit. To my surprise, Barbara expressed regret for her past behavior. She even said she would bring a gift for my birthday as an apology. I was shocked, both my husband's behind-the-scene efforts and Barbara's response. I get why you're surprised, but she did seem genuinely remorseful. I'm not saying you have to forgive her, but maybe it's worth seeing how she's changed. My husband was still skeptical, especially about the part where Barbara showed remorse, but he probably sensed a change when he directly witnessed her attitude. He added, Maybe it's worth reconsidering, uh, at least? I felt conflicted hearing this from him. After marrying him, I have always been on the receiving end of Barbara's snarky comments. Since our daughter was born, the jabs only got worse, happening almost daily now. So hearing that she's suddenly remorseful, it's hard to believe. I candidly told my husband this, and he replied, I get it, I still find it hard to believe myself. You don't need to go out of your way to make up with Barbara just because she apologized. He reassured me. With his words in mind, I felt a tad more open to Barbara's apology. Barbara planned to bring a birthday gift on the actual day, but I had a day trip planned. So I decided my husband would receive the gift and I would talk to Barbara another time. On my birthday, I left in the morning with friends for our trip. I enjoyed a day off from housework, childcare, and away from Barbara. Not that I dislike housework or childcare, but it's been a while since I have had a day out without a care. By afternoon, I felt truly relaxed and rejuvenated. Then I got a text. Lily, are you back home yet? I have placed a cake in the fridge. How was it? Have you already eaten it? It was from Barbara. She was texting rapidly one message after another. It was unusual for Barbara to text me, and she never texted this frantically. Taken aback, I replied, uh, Sorry, I haven't had it yet. I'm still out and about. I waited for her response when suddenly another message popped in. I thought it was too quick, but it wasn't from Barbara, it was from my husband. 
Apparently, our daughter couldn't resist and had a slice of my cake. From the photo he sent, it was a pretty big cake, so it wasn't a big deal if our daughter had a piece now. I couldn't help but smile at the picture of our daughter with cream on her face. It looks like Sakura got to the cake first. She's got cream all over her mouth, but seems to be enjoying it. Thank you. I added that and texted Barbara. Suddenly, my phone rang. It was Barbara. Maybe texting was getting tedious for her? I picked up the phone and she exclaimed, Is it true? Sakura ate the cake? Why didn't you stop her? Barbara is clearly flustered. I can't understand why Barbara is so panicked, so I asked, Uh, what do you mean? But Barbara only mumbled, Well, it's... As I'm getting frustrated with her, another text from my husband comes in. Thinking about how hectic it's been, I read the message. Sakura has collapsed. Taking her to the hospital now. Come home quick. I am shocked and can barely process what's happening. But if our daughter has really fainted, it's serious. I quickly explain to Barbara and hang up the phone. Before I end the call, I hear Barbara's voice trail off with, Oh my. But right now, I don't have the luxury to comfort her. I explain the situation to my friends just like I did with Barbara and head straight to the hospital. Once there, I see my daughter in a hospital bed receiving an IV drip. I rush to my husband who's holding our daughter's hand to find out what happened. I really don't know either. After eating the cake from Barbara, she started complaining about stomach pain. At first, I thought she ate too much. It seems our daughter fainted and they took her to the hospital. They diagnosed her with temporary stomach pain, but the cause is unknown. Before I arrived, she spent a lot of time in the bathroom and now they are giving her an IV for nutrition? Thankfully, it's not serious and she can go home once the IV is done. Relieved, I can't help but think of a concerning possibility. I discuss it with my husband deciding to address it after our daughter's treatment and for now, we stay by her side. About an hour passes and after her treatment, we visit Barbara's house. We brought our daughter, who's just been sick, but given the nature of our discussion, we let her rest in another room. Facing a nervous Barbara, we began our conversation. Barbara, as I mentioned earlier, Sakura fainted and we had to take her to the hospital. I try to start the conversation calmly. Barbara shrinks back at my tone, but I'm in no mood to be gentle. My husband said it happened right after eating the cake you gave her? What exactly happened? Considering my daughter complained of stomach pain after eating the cake from Barbara, and Barbara's reaction when I told her I suspect Barbara might have done something to the cake. When I share my suspicion with my husband, he says he thought the same. That's why we are confronting Barbara now. I don't know anything about that. Maybe Sakura just ate too much. Barbara staunchly denies any wrongdoing, which makes my husband sitting next to me turn beet red with anger. Trying to calm my furious husband, I further question Barbara. If you really don't know, then why were you so shaken up earlier? You didn't answer me when I asked before, did you? And wasn't it odd that you called in such a panic in the first place? In reality, all I shared at the time was that my daughter ate the cake. If there was truly nothing to hide, there would be no need to rush and call like that. Barbara must have realized this too. It was clear from her darting eyes and excuses, she blurted out, I just wanted Lily to have the best peace. I haven't hidden anything. All she could muster were pitiful excuses. My husband was the one who ran out of patience with Barbara. I'll be clear. If I can't figure out what's going on, I'm going to the police. I kept some of that cake mom gave us. I'll have it tested. Barbara, who had been piling on excuses, was suddenly at a loss for words. She probably never expected him to go that far. But I told you, it's because of Sakura's overeating. Why do you have to take it this far? As Barbara yelled and ranted, he calmly said, If that's the case, it'll be a funny story. I'll apologize to mom then. But he continued, Our daughter has been harmed. If this was deliberate, it's absolutely unforgivable. I don't think the police would stay silent either. With that, he glared at Barbara. Barbara looked petrified, her face pale as a ghost. To be honest, we're not sure how the police consultation would turn out. There's a chance they might not offer the outcome we are hoping for, but what mattered at the moment wasn't the outcome, but imagining what could happen to Barbara. 
It would be best if Barbara came clean and we were determined to press her for answers no matter how long it took. With that determination, we stared at Barbara for several minutes. Breaking the tense silence that followed my husband's words was Barbara herself. I never intended for Sakura to eat it. I just thought it would be fun if it troubled Lily a bit by adding laxatives. I never meant to hurt Sakura like this. Cornered with no excuse left and all escape routes blocked by my husband's firm stance, Barbara realized her mistake. She emphasized that she never intended to harm our daughter and pleaded for forgiveness. But no matter her intentions, our daughter ended up in the hospital. There was no way we were going to forgive Barbara. We're family bound by blood, so I'll spare you from the police this time. But we are cutting ties, and if you ever cross our paths again, there will be no mercy. With those final words to Barbara, my husband headed to the room where our daughter was sleeping. I locked eyes with Barbara as she reached out to my husband. I know you cared about Sakura, Barbara. I also realized the harassment was targeted at me. But now that Sakura got hurt, none of that matters anymore. You have no right to call yourself Sakura's grandmother. We left the house after I told Barbara this. While she watched my husband cradling our daughter, we never went to the police about Barbara, but we decided to cut ties with her. I thought she might do something about it, but she never did. I have heard she's now devastated and has been shutting herself in at home. She had always cherished her son and granddaughter. It must have deeply hurt her to be separated from them. However, this entire situation was caused by Barbara's actions. I can't master any sympathy for her. Afterward, our daughter recovered fully and is now happily attending school. Since that day, she has been in perfect health with no issues. Sometimes her lively nature can be a handful, but seeing her healthy, happy, and enjoying life is the greatest joy.